Hi everyone. Welcome to the Wool and Spinning Podcast. My name is Rachel. I am your host. I'm coming to you from just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, it is June 9th. Um, the kids are down for their naps and I am recording on a beautiful Sunday, sunny afternoon. Um, we've had gorgeous weather. It's currently 23 degrees um, Celsius um, here and um, we're all sun soaked and um, I, I just love it when it's sunny and warm and we can do lots of stuff outside. We're real outside people. Uh, we like hiking and camping and swimming and all that good fun stuff. So the summer is always a great time to be able to do all that stuff. And our summers here are relatively short because we don't get this really nice weather for very long. Um, we get a lot of gray days a lot of the year. So it's nice to take advantage of this beautiful weather. Um, so as I said, my name is Rachel. I am your host. I can be found on Ravelry and Instagram as Welford Pearls and Twitter for that matter. Um, this is a monthly spinning focused podcast, but I am going to start showing my non uh, hand spun, non spinning projects um, to you guys because I'm finding that um, I have stuff on the needles that I want to talk about that I don't necessarily blog about. So if you follow my blog, there is some overlap between the show and my blog, and that's because not everybody reads, uh, watches the podcast, and some people just read the blog. So it keeps my family up to date too on what I'm, what my, what I'm doing because they don't uh, watch the show. So yeah, so I've got. To, I'll put that in at the end though. My non-spinning knitting. Um, I'll put it in at the end as my works in progress, and um, that way you guys can see what I'm working on. And if you're not interested and you only are here for the spinning, then you can um, skip it. Um. So I have some big news. Um, I sold my Kromsky Minstrel. Um, I have had it for five years. Um, I never spun on it that much. Um, it's not that it wasn't a great wheel for me. It just, um, sorry, my hair is doing something crazy. <laughs> um, I just, I had always wanted a Lendrum. Um, and so once I got back into spinning, um, and really, um, spinning, I'm not going to say hardcore, but making that sort of the primary focus of my crafting, um, I moved toward um, buying a Lendrum and selling my, my Minstrel. So I sold it. So I have some kind of big news. I bought a drum carter. Um, the nice thing with selling my Minstrel was I was able to sell it locally. Um, the lady who bought it was lovely and um, really loves spinning. So that was um, really wonderful to be able to see it go to a home where it's going to be used and it's not going to sit in the corner. Um, she was really interested in the double drive, which I completely understand. The minstrel sings when it's in double drive. Um, so, long story short, it's gone, and I decided to spend the money on a drum carter. It's something that I've wanted for a really super long time. I chose the Brother drum carter. The I know that I'm going to get questions about why I chose the Brother. Um, mostly it was price. I will be totally honest. This is the one that I chose. So um, this is their standard manual hand crank um, drum carter. It's unfinished. Um, it's made of hemlock wood. Um, they will add a finish if you want to pay a bit extra, but I can do that myself. It produces a 9 inch by 22 inch bat. and. Um, I've seen online that they can hold um, up to four ounces of fiber. Um, I think probably um, 50 grams, so two ounces is probably about right, and pulling off two smaller bats. I don't like those huge bats that you're like, you know, having trouble dealing with all of the fiber. I like them a bit smaller. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about that. I got this really cool envelope thing with it, with all of the information about it. Um, that I have to go through and read. There's a few pages of information. And um, yeah, they come from their family owned business. They come from uh, Oregon. I say that and then I'm positive they're from Oregon. Um, 
they were great to deal with. I, I emailed um, them with a few questions and um, they got back to me within an hour. Um, Grace, who was the one that I um, uh, corresponded with, um, she was great to deal with and um, from a price point you really can't beat the price. So um, I bought the 120 TPI um, tines per inch. That's the number of tines that is um, in a one. It's all different. Um, there's different measurements for the cloth um, that you can get on the big drum. So that's this piece here. For those of you who um, aren't familiar with drum carters, this piece here, the big drum, um, this is the Licorin brush. And you can actually get, through Brother, you can actually get different um, Licorin TPI cloths as well. I think I got the standard 90, whatever comes standard. Um, but for the big drum, they offer um, 60 times per inch, 72, I think it's 60, it might be 90. So 72, 90, 120, and 190. I don't remember. Oh, you know what? I can just scroll down and look. Duh. I have it right here. Yeah, Licorin is uh, 90 TPI, and then um, the fine cloth is 120. So you can get an extra coarse Licorin, uh, drum, so 54 times per inch, 72, 90, 120, or 190. So 190, which is extra fine, that would be for your really fine fleeces. Um, I, I'm assuming somebody might uh, be able to um, say, that you'd be doing like extra, extra fine merino, um, extra fine rambouillet, uh, that kind of stuff. So I got the 120 because I mostly do fine stuff. Um, so like my Clum Forest is quite fine. It had lots of, um, uh, it, it's um, lots and lots of crimps per inch. Um, I think when I measured a few of my locks when they were still intact before I carded them the first time, I think I got like 11 crimps per inch or something. So Clum Forest, most Merino fleeces, Polworth, Cormo, all that stuff will do really well through there. But I can still also do um, some of the medium fineness um, fleeces. So Corridale, Perindale. Um, of course, now I have to list them off the top of my head. It's hard. Uh, a Shetland, um, probably a finer Romney, so maybe a lamb's fleece, um, etc. So it just gives me lots of options. Um, I didn't want to get the 72 because I don't do coarse stuff and I have 72 TPI hand cards so if I need that I can use my hand cards and I can always rent locally a 72 TPI drum carter so I definitely wanted the slightly finer um, cloth because that's what I spin mostly is finer fleeces. So that brings me to my next thing um, is that I really want to get into um, processing my own stuff. Um, I really enjoy spinning up four ounce braids because I really like color, we all do, and um, they're fun to spin. Um, it's a fine, finite project, you've got four ounces to spin and that's kind of what um, you've got. And you spin it up, you do it, you will with it, and then you're done. Um, and the more that I think about it and the more that I have been um, exploring what I want to do with my spinning, the more I have come to the conclusion that I really want to get into more processing my own stuff, start to finish, even if I only do a few projects a year, um, and maybe have two or three fleeces um, that I'm processing in various stages. Um, I'm not going to get into doing, um, so Chrissy of the Snappy Stitches uh, podcast she's a really good friend of mine and we go out for coffee all the time and talk everything fiber and spinning and knitting we're really on the same page about this because I think we're both really feeling like we spin because we want to spin the fiber um, not necessarily um, I don't want to put words in her mouth but I think we both while we enjoy processed combed top um, a whole world opens up to you when you do your own processing um, she's a uh, dyer, she knows, does beautiful things with dye, and that's something that I'm definitely looking at next. Um, I would like to do a natural dye course in the fall. 
And I think we're both looking at sort of this whole world of possibilities that's out there. So um, I probably won't be buying much more comb top. Um, I have a stash of stuff that I'm going to slowly work my way through. I'll talk about it here on the show and how it went. But I think I'm kind of done. Um, I think I'm going to be spending my money on buying fleeces from now on and processing them either myself or getting them processed by places like Moral Fleece Works. Spending that money and and pro, um, and uh, um, spending them um, when as time allows. It gives me sweater quantities of yarn. It'll give me larger shawl quantities of yarn rather than buying a few braids and hoping that I have enough. Um, and I think there's just the plain um, uh, enjoyment of processing your own stuff. So, um, yeah. So, th the show is going to take a little bit of a different um, direction from now on, I think. Um, and we're going to be moving more towards um, processing what I'm doing with it, what's coming out, um, sampling. Um, yeah, and I think actually for content for the show, it'll be a lot more interesting um, because I think there are people out there that are interested in this stuff and, and like me are learning and aren't really sure where to start. So let's all jump in together and do it together. Um, so one thing that I was have done on my drum carter thus far is I've been playing around with just some of the stuff that I have um, in my stash that's um, just combed top, some rovings, um, I've got some alpaca out there, and this was just a mini bat that I did off the drum carter. Um, so this is how fine, hopefully you can see that, I'm not sure that you can. I added some Firestar in there. I was just having fun because I just wanted to see how it would come out. Um, this was two passes, no naps, no um, tangles in terms of like really obvious stuff. Just beautiful. I added some alpaca in there. So I'm going to put this on my drop spindle and spin it, spin away. I might pass it through the drum carter one more time and see what I come up with. So yeah, it looks really washed out because of the light. Um, I have so much sunlight coming in here that the camera was showing that it was overexposed. So I put the light on above to help it to even out. Um, I think this might be the first show where my hair is actually showing up as my natural color, which is kind of crazy because that's usually a good gauge of like how, how the light is. So that is my first little mini bat. I also put some Coriadale in through the, that has tons and tons of naps and I was really disappointed when I opened up the bag after I bought it. But um, I think I'm still going to throw it on my drop spindle and spin a little sample because um, it just gives me an idea of sort of what I want for the future. And there's some navy blue perindale in there and some merino. It's not really showing up, but again, super smooth, easy to come off. I need to put a finish on on the uh, like in the on the um, tray because the unfinished wood catches the fiber. So I do need to do that. But after that, I'll be uh, off to the races. So expect a lot more um, carding from now on. Um, and I'd really like to do some hand pulled roving um, off the carter. So that's where you um, load your drum, you cart all your fiber, you load your drum, and then you um, pull your roving off of your drum carter through um, a diz. Chrissy was talking about it on her last show on episode 100, if you're interested in hearing a little bit more about that. There's a few people on Instagram that have um, posted photos of what that looks like. Um, and they've actually photographed it. I'll see if I can find it right now. Um, one person in particular, she photographed it next to um, what combed top looks like versus pulled roving. And it was really interesting because it was the first time that I had seen the, the difference. So the one on the left, if you guys don't follow Snurb Yarn, you should. Um, S-N-E-R-B yarn, all one word, and her blog is fantastic. So this was a uh, hand pulled roving off of the drum carter, and this one was dyed uh, top. She did, these are her colorways, but you can definitely see the difference. This is very heathered, um, it looks a little bit raw, and this one is um, 
you know, the fibers are all still aligned. Um, the colors are very clean, really interesting. So check out her Instagram feed, check out her blog and um, definitely expect some more on that in the future because I would really like to do some stuff like that. I'm really torn about um, dyeing my Clum Forest ahead of time before I card it again. I'm going to card it one more time to get a few more times to get it cleaner. Um, and I, I'd really like to do a sample and see what it looks like dyed ahead of time and then carded and pulled off and see which one I like better because I think that I'll probably like the heathered finished yarn a lot more and then I can decide what I want to do in terms of what sweater I want to knit because I was going to do Charlie's cardigan which is a um, uh, Amy Herzog pattern I'll see if I can pull it up um, it's got lace laced chevrons up the front and um, I think most people have seen it um, but now I'm kind of torn because I if I have enough yardage and if I have enough um, for a sweater I was thinking actually just my default a v-neck boyfriend cardigan um, which is what I always default back to because I wear them. I wear them and wear them and wear them and I don't wear anything else. So this is Charlie's cardigan. But I've been thinking, so that was my plan with for the Clun Forest. But like I said, I'm kind of going back to my idea of doing um, just a very plain boyfriend cardigan. Uh, V-neck. I'll probably use uh, Stephanie Jappel's Shapely Boyfriend and then adjust the gauge based on my gauge. Or I'll do a custom fit. That is actually probably easier. <laughs> and then you know it'll, it that you don't have to do any math yourself. The machine does it. Um, James is not sleeping and he's sitting in his room and he's reading books and he's okay, but he's not awesome. And I really want to talk about this. <laughs> I'm sure you're all eyeing it in the background. Um, and I don't want to um, cut that short. That um, discussion I guess so I'm gonna stop here and I will be back but it might not be until this evening so um, if the lighting's different if I'm wearing something different um, it's just because if naps don't happen it's not fair to James for me not to uh, go get him he, he is just sitting there reading but I'd rather go play with him so uh, then leave him up there um, so I I might see you again in a few minutes, but I might not chat with you again until this evening. So um, until then, happy spinning, and uh, hopefully it won't be too long. Hi, everyone. I'm back. Um, so it's the evening now. Um, it's still June 9th, but it's um, 7.15 in the evening. Um, both kids are in bed. Um, they're not quite asleep, but they're down. So um, one point for teen parents, I think. There were no naps this afternoon so we ended up going to the park and it actually got up to 28 at one point it got really hot and um, i had slathered the kids in sunscreen but james was really complaining and uh so i said to him well do you want to go home and have a cold bath oh i he says so we came home he rode his bike all the way home which was really great and um i filled up the tub with cold water lukewarm but to them being so hot it felt cold and they played for about 45 minutes and then we came downstairs and had um, dinner so I think it just got us through that really awful time in the afternoon between four and five when they're hungry and they're tired and they haven't slept and it's hot so thanks for bearing with me um, so I had left off um, I had finished telling you about my um, drum carter and I was gonna jump into hand spun knitting I don't have a finished object to show you, um, as deceiving as this is. Um, it's actually a work in progress still, so I'll jump into talking about it. I have um, a couple of spins to show you, and then I'll um, show you a couple of things I'm working on that's not spinning related, and I think that'll wrap the show. So um, I had shown you guys a while ago the Solaris cardigan that was a free pattern put out by um, the Barocco design team. This was a um, pieced 
uh, a seamed uh, cardigan. You start on the bottom, you cast on um, for the band, and you knit up. You do shoulder and arm seam, um, underarm shaping, and you knit up and around the back um, of the neck to create the back of the sweater. And then you do more armhole shaping, and then you knit down to the end and cast off. And then um, you do your shoulders, which you seam after the fact, and you set in. Um, and then you also knit a back piece and you seam it across the back shoulder and actually there isn't a good picture on this um, on the project on the um, design the detail uh, page for the Solaris cardigan but basically you um, you have this big strip of knitting with some shaping um, for the for the armholes and then you end up knitting a back piece that um, only has half of what you would knit from here to here. It only goes to here and then you seam it across the back. Um, really interesting construction. I've knit one. Um, I'll link to it down below so that you can look at my projects page. So I also had come across this which is the Cambio kind of like a shrug, shrug vest kind of thing from um, Stephen West and it was in Malabrigo book four and I didn't want to buy the book and the pattern and whatnot because with our dollar right now it's quite expensive um, so I sort of looked at that and I looked at what um, um, some of the design features of the Cambio and then I thought you know I've already knit a Solaris I've already massively um, modified it for what I wanted at that time so I did it again um, so my Solaris is not going to have sleeves and I adjusted for that which I'll talk about I'm not going to take it off my dress form and I'll show you why so this is I'm going to move it closer sorry if there's some skidding sounds or anything so this is my cat my Solaris so I cast on down here and I knit this panel all the way up and around the back of the neck and what I'm especially proud of with this is um, this is all short rows at the back so when I got to here I realized that I was gonna have all of this fabric across the back and it was all gonna bunch up around my neck and I didn't have a lot of yarn to play around with that with. Um, I knew that I was sort of playing a bit of yarn chicken with this um, knit anyways. So I actually did short rows all through here. So um, it was a six, um, six row sh uh, short row repeat with um, playing rows in between. So it ended up being a 12 stitch repeat. And I did that all the way across. So there's six, there's three sections of short rows here and three sections of short rows here. So the center back is here. And actually the only reason why I can tell that is because the color is from up here all the way down. So that was my like long um, finishing row to finish all of my wraps and turns and stuff. Um, I did use wrap and turns for the for my short rows. I didn't try I, my favorite uh, short rows are the um, Carol's Sunday short rows. I think they're called. Um, they're my favorite uh, short rows, but I just did regular wrap and turns for this, and so I made my way across the back. I knew that I needed um, seventy two rows across here. I needed um, what was that? I needed twelve inches across the back to accommodate for this. So that's what I did and then I cast on um, 18 inches across I uh, did my um, ribbing and I did a, a 2 by 3 garter rib so it's knit on the right side and then on the wrong side it's uh, purl 2 knit 3 and gives you these cool garter ridges um, in your purl section which I really like and then I did reverse stockinette up the back which I think really nicely contrasts um, the uh, the front because this is stockinette stitch 
So I think it the Cambri Cambio when you really study some of the project photos uh, that people have done, that's what it is. It's reverse stockinette back here, and this is stockinette. And then um, I came down the other side, did the exact same thing down the other side, and you can tell this is why I don't want to take it off my dress form. So I've just started the seam here on the side here, which I'm going to actually rip out and start again. And um, I've got it all pinned kind of to show you sort of how that'll work up. And then I'll wash it and block it and it'll be done. I'm really excited about this. I'm just going to push this back. So I knit this on um, five millimeter needles. Um, I actually used my um, Knitter's Pride Platinum, I think they're called Novas, Cubics, yeah, five millimeter. So these are square needles. You can see that they're not round. Let's see if the camera will. They are square, my friends. Super sharp tips. Um, I really like these. I bought the um, sweater knitting um, interchangeable set. So I think it goes from four millimeter up to eight or nine millimeter. I think it goes six and a half millimeter and then you get the the nine millimeter like most sets do. Um, I've been having a lot of trouble with my wrist. Um, I It's been an ongoing problem. I have um, mummy thumb so I've got tendonitis in here. I have to do stretches and stuff and, and pull just to get this muscle to loosen up. But I also get pain up through the back of my hand right here. It's in one spot. It's one um, tendon that acts up. Um, my physio works on it every so often when I need a, a tune up. So when I'm purling, I hope you guys can see this. I When I purl up, I actually twist my wrist to purl up. And what I find the square needles do um, is they help me to um, resist doing that. So I still do twist a little bit, but not like to the extent that I do with circular, with round um, knitting needles. So if you're having problems with your wrists, I would recommend checking them out just to see if, if they'll help you to rest your wrist um, a little bit. Arthritic wrists, apparently square needles are... Um, lifesavers for for people who thought that they wouldn't be able to knit anymore I don't have arthritis in my wrist so I don't know if for me personally if that would is um, would be the case so I can't speak to that this is what I had left over for yarn so I don't know what my exact um, yardage was on this but I don't have a lot left <laughs> so I am glad that I did the short rows across the back because I wouldn't have had enough yarn um, I will figure out based on the weight of the finished um, vest, I guess. I was going to call it a cardigan, but it's not really a cardigan. Um, I'm gonna, I'll finish out what I, how much I actually used, and then I'll weigh this as well and see how much it is. Um, this was my, this was um, December of 2014, so just this past December. Um, Sweet Georgie Yarns uh, Glitterati, it was the December club. It's a superwash merino nylon blend. I think it's an 80-20. Maybe I should pull it up just to see because this is a spinning podcast and I probably should tell you the proper stats. Um, the colorway was called Starry Nights and that's actually part of the reason why I did go with the two-ply in the end because it really does look like Starry Nights. Um, I was really torn with this yarn, how to ply it and I, I remember I talked about it. I, I had talked about a lot, all the different um, samples that I did, and I wasn't happy with it for a long, long time. These were all my samples, and um, I was just so torn because um, a lot of people on Instagram spun it right away, and they were all spinning it. Um, they were all Navajo plying it, and I just didn't know what to do. So I ended up um, two plying it. I did very intentional plying. So I spun to three bobbins and I chose off of each bobbin. If I, I had one bobbin that was uh, full compared more full than the other ones. Um, it's the one in the middle. And so I kept 
choosing from the other two bobbins um, what color would come next. So I tried to match the colors as best as I could so that I would get this um, striping effect and some big um, color block sections of, of the same or similar colors so that you can see like I ended up with um, a quite um, it quite well matched at the end which is this one it was all barber pulled but th by then it didn't really matter because I knew I could only control it to a certain extent so this was the finished yarn that's what it looked like so I had two big skeins they were each um, roughly 300 um, yards each so I ended up with um, 758 yards so it's pretty good um, I knew I had enough for this um, as long as I didn't push it I wanted it a little tiny bit longer but now that I see it on my dress form with my t-shirt I think it's actually kind of perfect so yeah the side that looks long that is um, a little bit shorter I'll just adjust the camera a bit and you can see that's uh, a little bit uh, longer here is not seamed yet so this side is seamed nope this side is not seamed so it's shorter because it's pulling up um, and not quite the right way so that is that project um, it will be done by July and hopefully I will be able to just show it to you I won't uh, talk about it I will probably do quite a detailed and in-depth uh, blog post about it with all of my modifications my stitch counts because Solaris is a free pattern um, and then you can see what I did um, I did do along the front bands here because I knew that they would curl quite badly because it's stock net stitch um, I did slip my first stitch of every row to keep it a really nice uh, finished edge and I did the same on the back um, up here so I have slipped a, it almost looks like a chain um, like an I cord kind of because it curls this way on the back it curls um, stockinette stitch when it's just knit on its own always curls inward to the wrong side so because this is reverse stockinette it curls up onto itself um, so you can see the um, the finished slip stitches on either side. And actually, I quite like it because it looks like it's finished. Um, so that was one thing that I did do just because I knew that these edges wouldn't be finished. Um, so all of this is slipped because um, I knew after my 77th row, <laughs> um, I love math and knitting like it's so easy to figure out your row gauge your and your uh, stitch gauge and to figure out like exactly how many rows you need to do how much you need to knit width wise like I'm all about doing huge swatches and actually I was going to show you the swatch for this but um, I don't have it with me I think it's in my big uh, knitting bag of tricks and I don't want to dig around um, so after row 77 I slipped the stitches all the way um, across until I got to where I needed to start um, not slipping them so that I could seam this really nicely and then I started slipping them again does that make sense I hope so um, I was pointing so hopefully that um, was clear enough um, so that's pretty much it for hand spun knitting because I haven't really been working on anything else because I've been spinning I have been spinning some three waters farm um, I won um, the February spin along for Three Waters Farm. She does um, a draw every month for anybody who has tagged their projects in Instagram and has participated in the thread on Ravelry. So, um, and she gives you basically what you win is a coupon code to the um, to the Etsy shop. So I used it and I bought some Marina Tuss Mar Merino Tussa silk. 8020 in the spring brooms edge colorway it's from three waters farm there in uh, north carolina and i did a i also bought this is related i promise i also bought some now where's the tag hmm. oh right here sorry i also brought some bought some pull worth tussa silk 
and it's an 85-15 blend in bottom land. I had shown this on acquisitions last month, I think. I think, I think. Um, so I wanted to, originally I wanted to combo spin these two. Um, the colors are very similar. The color repeats are very similar. When you, when I laid them out um, together, they were very similar. I showed it to my mom even, and she was like, oh, those, they must be from the same dyer. Absolutely they are. Um, so I did a two-ply sample, and I'm sorry the light isn't a bit better so you can see that. That's a bit better. Um, it came out quite um, looking like a two-ply. Um, I'm not a big two-ply fan. Um, I love it when other people do it, but then when I do it, I'm like, mm. um, the brown and the white ended up barber pulling in this quite a bit. And um, I think, um, so the bottom, what I'm trying to say is the bottom land, which is not quite finished, is uh, very, very gray. Very, very gray. So from a distance, it's very, very, very gray once it's spun. The colors are gorgeous. Um, I actually like this one more than I ended up liking um, Broomsfield. Broom's Edge, sorry. Um, this is what it looks like when it's still in the, um, before I prep, because I haven't prepped this yet to spin, because I wanted to show you. So this is what it looks like. It's really, really, really pretty. So some coral in there, rust, um, some browns, some ochre, greeny, yellow, blue. But because you've got these big repeats of gray, and you've got that three times, so one, two, because that brown is very gray, uh, three, four, and then at the end, five. Um, when you spin it up, it ends up looking very, very gray. And I love gray. Um, but because of that, I'm really, really tempted to Navajo ply this, to chain ply it, and keep what little color there is clean. Um, because I think once, if I did a blended three ply, or if I put it with something else, which I'll show you in a minute, um, I think those really beautiful rusts and tealy blues are just going to be completely lost. Um, so, executive decision made. I decided to keep them separate and not combo plot, uh, combo spin them. So I'm working on bottom land right now. I'm just almost finished it. Um, I'm spinning it on a uh, on my lace flyer actually. I pulled out my lace flyer on my Lendrum just to give it a shot. I've heard mixed mixed uh, comments about it, but I really wanted higher. Oh, and I love the pole worth to spin. Oh, it's just love i i've i always love spinning pole worth it's one of my favorites so this is the lace flyer for the uh, lendrum so you can see the whorls are a lot smaller so i've been spinning this at 12 to 1 so on the on the bigger one um i as when i got halfway through the second or third bobbin i'd been spinning the merino and pole worth um i've been i did one bobbin of the pole worth one bobbin of merino one bobbin and back and forth and um, I'll actually grab what's left of the, um, sorry for the armpit shot. Um, this was what's left from the merino from plying it. So I spun one of the, one of the merino and then I spun one of the pole worth and so on. So that's how I have two done and not the third because when I finished the third merino I needed the bobbin. Um, I immediately regretted with both of these not um, going down to the 15 or even 17 to 1, so one of these ones, um, because I, I really like higher twist um, in my yarns anyways, and um, such fine yarns like Merino and Polworth, um, I just like a lot of, a lot of twist. Um, and I am spinning these quite fine, as you can see. So... Um, I'm not actually sure what my wraps print for my singles was, but I was trying to be very, very consistent. So I had a spinner's, I had made an index card that I wrapped the singles on, which of course I don't have here to show you, um, so that I could keep checking it. 
so um, this is ended up being the finished yarn for the bottom land so I did a blended three ply um, I'm not sure I made the right decision doing the blended three ply I'm sure some of you are seeing out there going oh but that's beautiful blah 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 um, I really like it don't get me wrong um, the green in it and the yellow really I'm sorry the lights not better um, really um, shine because they're they kind of um, they were the dominant uh, colors on the on the top um, and there's the teal green in there just like in the uh, bottom land and the yellow is a little bit springier the green is a bit springier they're not grayed out at all and then you get these hits of browns and a little bit of gray but they don't take over the um, uh, skein at all um, but I kind of wish I had chain plied it. I kind of wish that all those greens and yellows were clean. So, I don't know. I like it. I don't absolutely, like, love it. But I like it. Um, it made for just a lovely yarn. Super, super soft. Um, lots of uh, squoosh uh, factor. Um, just really, really, really lovely. Um, I'm, I am actually quite excited to knit with this. I have some, um, what was it? Was it Falkland that I spun at Three Waters Farm? Yes, it was Falkland. Uh, this yarn, I did a fractal spin. This was the one that got me the coupon for this. Um, so this I spun back in February. I'm actually kind of tempted to take these three yarns and somehow put them together because the colors are really super similar. Um, so this one has some purple in it and some coral, but the greens and the yellows are, st are the same as what's in here, which is the same as what's in here. So I'm kind of tempted to see if I could work something out, but we'll see. Um, so that's my spinning. It's not much. I'm really sorry. Um, we. I can't even say that it's been, um, like it's been busy, but everybody's busy. Um, I'm back to work, so that's definitely affected um, how much I'm getting done. Um, I also find plying on the lendrum is really slow, so I don't, I get the spinning done, but then I don't get the plying done. And I'm gonna, um, I'm co-captaining the Tour de Fleece um, lendrum team, so come check out the Cult of Lendrum group if you, um, uh, have a lendrum and spin on a lendrum we'd love to have you spin with us for a tour de fleece it's super um, uh, relaxed and Sarah's my co-captain with me and um, her and I um, it's nice because sometimes we can't get online so having that other person when you know that they're going to be online is uh, really great um, super relaxed spin what you can do what you can make your own goals and um, love to see you over there um, and I'm hoping to get through that clun forest. That's my big goal for Tour de Fleece, is to get a big chunk of that clun forest done. So I'm going to start um, putting it back through the drum carter, get it cleaned off, and um, get it ready to um, spin, 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 spin <laughs> for Tour de Fleece. Um, so that's it for the spinning. Uh, I'm sorry it was on a, the, a bit of the lean side this week. Uh, the only other thing that I have to show you is just regular knitting. It's not very interesting, I'll, I'll warn you. Um, but I thought that I would show you just because it's fun to show you. Everybody's interested in everybody else's knitting project, I think. So these are my take-to-work socks that I've been working on, slowly but surely. I have the other toe started. It's in here somewhere. Um, because I do knit my socks two at a time. I do the toes and then I do the feet, like the body of the feet. And then I um, do each heel and then I do one leg and then I do the other leg. So that's my toe. So I'm almost on the foot of the sock and then I'll start on the leg, the foot of the sock for this one. And then I'll turn the heels and then I'll be cruising up the, uh, up the leg. So this is these are like bluey purples, blues, plummy purple, um, tan thrown in there, lots of cream. Really, really pretty. This is um, Fable from Drops. It's a fa it's called Fable Print. It's a superwash wool, 25% nylon. 
it's cheap. Um, but I really, really like the uh, fabric that it's making, and um, they'll be great for actually for work because they're a little bit. I'm knitting these on two millimeter needles, which are a size one, I think, or size zero. What are they, my friends? What are they? Size zero, just on chow goose. 32 inch I magic loop, as you can see. Um, two millimeter. I knit most of my socks on 2.25 millimeter needles, but this yarn was a little bit finer. And so I decided to try the two millimeter and actually I'm really glad I did because the, the fabric's really nice. So those are my work socks right now. So they only get worked on when I'm at work if I get a chance. So like on break and sitting in the, in the break room in the morning before we start um, at night when we have uh, breaks at night. Notice how I say when, because we often don't get breaks, but just because we're so busy. And then the other thing I'm working on, and actually I was getting a little bit worried because I couldn't find the other the other ball of this. I think everybody's knit a pair of these, and if you haven't, you should. <laughs> um, this is just regular Patton's Croy socks. And this is the blue striped rag colorway and I think a lot of people have knit this particular colorway and it's kind of addictive so I'm just about to start the blue stripe you can see it's at the top there I'm almost through it I'm actually almost to the gray and where my finger is is where the the uh, blue finishes and it goes into the gray right here so I have like one more round and then I go into gray and then I'll be back to the yellow and then orange and then red and blue so those are those I started these one night when my parents were over and we were visiting and I didn't really want to work on um, anything that I needed to concentrate on because I was in the short rows on this and I didn't want to risk um, having to rip back in the morning so I um, cast these on <laughs> this yarn's been in my stash for uh, over a year so I thought and I've been really looking forward to knitting myself a pair of these but I was kind of waiting for like the perfect heel pattern and to figure out when I had figured out what I liked in my vanilla socks and so once I found the fish lips kiss heel both of these are fish lips kiss heel um, I decided to cast on so these are Addy sock rockets in the 2.25 size so these are my default um, sock needles and I almost, I couldn't find the other ball of this. I was getting really worried. But I actually found it today. Um, it was it was actually caught up with some sweater quantities of yarn that I had. So thank goodness. So I found it. So I'll be able to start the other one, get the toe done. And then when I finish this foot, I'll um, go back and do the other one. The stripes are addictive. I totally get what Jasmine from the Knit More Girls is saying about addictive popcorn knitting when it comes to self-striping sock yarn. I haven't knit a pair of socks quite as striped as these, like where it's like consistent intervals. She's right, it's addictive. Um, I was going to show you a sweater that's been stashed for the last three or four months, but I'm actually not going to because it's, um, it's in a big bag behind my um, laptop monitor, or behind my laptop, and um, it's... I'm actually worried if I start pulling it out of the bag that my needles are going to fall out because they're like half out of the sleeve. Um, so I will share it with you next time. It's nothing interesting. It's Cascade 220. Everybody knits with Cascade 220, so it's nothing really that interesting to show. But um, I'm really going to make an effort to try to finish it this summer because I was so excited about it when I first bought the yarn, and then I just completely ran out of steam. So... Um, I'm going to get that back out on the needles and get that finished now that this is done. And hopefully um, I'll have that to show you next time, just wherever I am. So with that, I'm going to go. I'm going to say goodnight and um, a happy spinning wherever you are. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in July. Bye everyone.